know, I've held my hands up. I've, I've done something that journalists don't do very often. I've said I've got it wrong <laughs> on Harry Maguire. OK, he's here. But, but, but in all seriousness, today's going to be a bigger test for Harry Maguire. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Good morning from Doha and welcome to the latest edition of World Cup Confidential. Over the next 20 minutes, you will hear Rob Draper tell us that Gower Southgate is planning to choose the same 11 tonight against Senegal that beat Wales 3-0 last Tuesday. Martin Samuel says that Gower Southgate's use of substitutions is the final piece that needs to go into his managerial jigsaw. And Harry Maguire sceptic Chris Sutton warns the Manchester United defender that tonight will be the sternest test of his World Cup so far. Rob, I'm going to come to you first and talk to you about Gala Southgate's expected lineup for tonight's game. In the Mail on Sunday today, you suggest that it could well be the same team that that beat Wales. Is that what we is that what we're thinking? It is what we're thinking. I'm not 100, percent but I do think Foden's going to start, and I think if Foden starts, Rashford's going to start because obviously he had a great game last time, and it looks like they've been changed. I, I, I think at the moment they're thinking that when they played Mount in that midfield role, too much attacking and left Declan Rice sort of too exposed. They like that solidity of the midfield. It looks like that's the way they're going. Martin, that's an extraordinary thing when you think about it. Um, This is a team that absolutely nobody would have have, uh, selected or predicted at at the start of this tournament. If somebody had said that we'd have been playing our first knockout game with Rashford in the team, with Sterling not in the team, with Henderson in the team, I don't think anybody would have would have believed that. No, I don't think they would. I don't think Gareth Southgate would have uh, predicted it either. But that's, I, I think that's testament to Gareth Southgate that the uh, teams evolve in, in tournaments. People forget. I mean, 1966, the wingiest wonders, as as they're always known, played with wingers for the first three matches. We had a winger. England had a winger in every single one of their group games. Uh, Ian Callaghan was the last one. It was a different winger. Uh, in all of the games because none of them were really doing it as far as our Ramsey was concerned and that's why they became the, the wingless wonders but they were only wingless for the last three games so teams evolve um, you know 96 the team evolves through injury Jamie Redknapp is in that England team uh, initially um, so stuff up. David Platt doesn't um, play for England, doesn't start for England in 1990 until it's in the knockout stages and, and, and leaves the tournament as one of uh, as one of the mainstays of the England team. So I don't think it's a problem. I really don't think that's that's a problem. I, I think it's very interesting that it's happened um, because this is Southgate responding to to form basically, and the worry is that the form came against probably the poorest European team here, which is Wales. But nonetheless, um, everyone liked what they saw the other night. Everyone thought that was England on the front foot a lot more. I'm not going to criticise it before the game. You're right about David Platt. It's a very, very good point. That goal he scored against Belgium that we all remember, that was actually his first international goal. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's funny how things look different over time. Um, Chris, tell a goal. in your uh, column in the in the mail yesterday, you pointed out some vulnerabilities. Um, they've conceded a goal from a cross in every single game that they've played um, in the World Cup so far. So you obviously have spotted um, a potential weakness there that England could exploit. Yeah, I mean, it's something I'm sure, you know, England will be particularly meticulous with their preparation. I think of the last World Cup, um, England were really effective from set pieces. Probably not so much this World Cup, just at this moment in time. And, you know, it's it's an area of concern for um, for Senegal. But, you know, I, I don't think England are going to have more strings to the bow and, and try and score in a number of ways. But set plays are a big part of the game, especially when you get into the, you know, the knockout stages and, and the and the higher you go up the chain. So I'm sure Gareth has worked very, very hard on it. And, and maybe big Harry Maguire um, will come up trumps from a set piece, Ian. Yeah, your man, Harry. I mean, he must be so pleased he's in the team, given that you told us about 10 days ago that he shouldn't even be in the country. Yeah, I mean, every time I come on here, uh, you know, you ask me about Harry Maguire and remind me of that. Any chance of you changing the record? You know, I've held my hands up. I've I've done something that journalists don't do very often. I've said I've got it wrong (laughs) on Harry Maguire. 
Okay, he's here, but 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 in all seriousness, today's going to be a bigger test for Harry Maguire yeah. because you know, are we? Yeah, you know, have we read too much? In Martin made the point about Wales being the weakest um, European team in the competition. I, I wouldn't argue with that. So you know, have we read too much into that game? Uh, Senegal will be a different test. Mm. England will dominate the ball, but Senegal will 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 counter and. Uh, and if England do have a weakness, um, and, and the weakness coming into the tournament, I thought was in that centre half position. Today, Harry Maguire will get his sternest test. So maybe if I come on a couple of days after uh, today on the Mail Online, I think we can have a you know a, a better chat about Harry Maguire. And you oh, can no, say I, maybe I, I like, you, you were right. I like I like the way our chats go on Harry Maguire. I don't think we can do it better than we do it. Um, Danny Murphy, Danny Murphy, another um, BBC pundit, says in the Mail on Sunday today that um, Maguire would be pivotal. Um, I mean, all I can hear from uh, the outside the BBC hotel is a uh, kind of screeching brakes and U-turns. Um, Rob, are, are, you, are you not allowed inside the BBC hotel? What do you think? <laughs> would you let Would you let a man with a face out of this inside your accommodation? Um, I'm not. I'm not in the hotel. I mean, you, you know, you. I'm, I'm down the street. I'm one of the one of the real workers. Yeah, let's not talk about the BBC hotel anymore. Uh, Rob, um, it's, a, it's a serious point. This is a step up in opposition today. Um, should we should we be concerned that this team, ha as Chris has just alluded to, this team has largely been picked on the back of a performance against Wales, who were the, by far the weakest European team here? Is, should we be concerned ab about that or not? I'm, I'm not concerned about that, but I am with Chris in the... the, the the real tournament starts now, doesn't it? So a couple of days ago, and I was guilty of this, we were all sort of waxing lyrical about how good the Americans were in that midfield. Ooh, yeah, they caused a lot of problems. And of course, even how takes them apart last night. So you, it's very difficult to judge sides when they're playing mediocre opposition. But that, that's true of everyone. You know, you, you can talk about the Brazilians, the Argentines. It, it's the real test now, isn't it? You're going to get some proper sort of games that, that are going to stretch you. And this is where they will be under pressure. I think that Senegal, obviously they're African champions, they're, they're serial winners in that they've won penalty shootouts to win the African Cup of Nations and to qualify here, beating Egypt both times. So they are a formidable team. So yeah, it's going to be tricky. Yeah, I was at the Holland usa game yesterday and was, I was really disappointed with America mm. after the way they played against England. Um, they really didn't, didn't um, show up yesterday. Martin, you, you, in your piece in um, Saturday's Mail, um, you wrote about substitutions and more specifically the the use of them. And you made two uh, main points. One was that England's bench, whoever Gareth picked, leaves a hell of a lot of talent, attacking talent mm. on the bench. Mm. But the more salient point that you were making was that it's really important that Gareth uses substitutions well. That's the next stage. That's that's the last step. If you, if you look at what Gareth's done with this team, the qualifying is straightforward now. Um, they go deeper, deep into tournaments now, um, semi-final and a final. Um, even the Nations League getting to that last four stage the time before this. Um, the, the, what seems to me that it, the, the, the final tweak is this, this is the realisation that, one, we've, with the possible exception of Brazil, we've got the best bench here. And two, that... In those matches, the, the matches that we've lost, the, the final and the semi-final, the substitutions have been reactive. The other lot score, and then we make a change. We we bring um, Saka on um, after Italy have equalised. Um, we, you know, Jamie Vardy comes on with eight minutes to go in in Russia after Croatia go two one up, and we we don't seem, you know, a real strength of England could be. If we get in front, when we get in front, because we do tend to we do tend to start well, we often lead games, to actually bring that advantage home, to actually strengthen, to give the other manager the, 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 the chance to think about where you're sort of looking at their bench and thinking, right, so what's Robert, what's Mancini's next move here? What's he going to do here? If we do this, if we make this change, he's then got to think about that. He's then got to maybe change what he was planning. And I think that's the I think that's the last stage of the evolution, and I think that could be a, a game changer for England at this World Cup if we can get it right. Chris, uh, as players, do you do you judge your manager 
on things like that? Do you look at the way a manager uses a squad, the manager's tactics, and judge him? Or are players largely more inward-looking and just kind of concentrate on rather selfishly, if you like, on what they are doing? It depends on the on the player, I think. Um, you know, as a, I think you can look at it from uh, from both perspectives. I think the uh, you know the the, the substitute debate. Uh, you know what, what what you touched on there is really interesting. I think this World Cup more than any other. Um, you, you know, the, for example, Japan have used their their bench superbly well. You know, it, it, it can you know win your games, and I think that that maybe Gareth is learning that and has been reticent in the past to to make substitutions. And, you know, we're all, um, you know, we all have our own view on who the England starting lineup should be. But the fact that Gareth is, you know, seems to be more proactive now uh, in terms of his substitutions, I think that that's a massive, massive strength. You know, we all get obsessed, you know, is he, is he going to play Foden or, you know, is he going to play Saka or Sterling or, or Rashford? The fact that you have this armoury on the bench to bring on now, that's a, that's a huge strength. Rob, African nations have, have done reasonably well in this World Cup so far. Morocco have beaten Belgium and Tunisia have beaten France and Cameroon have beaten Brazil. Should we be concerned about that or should we just look at the Senegal team and see a team that, for example, has players from the English Championship in it and think we should just win this game? No, I don't, I don't think the latter point. I mean, uh, Gareth was very clear. And, it, it, you know, if you talk about Ismail Assar, Gareth was saying, OK, he's a championship player, but really he's a Premier League player. And he is, isn't he? He's, he's what would have kept hold of him. But he's a good, quick player. I think the pertinent point is Idrissa Gray's suspended. Um, Sadio Mane is sadly at home, injured, isn't it? Ku- Kuwate is struggling with an injury. So it's not... You know, it's not just they're missing Mane, they, they are missing some really pivotal players. And and I think that could be crucial. That could turn it. But no, I, I mean, look, they are serial winners. I think England haven't ever won anything. This team's gone through tournaments, managed them and won big trophies. So, point, you know, yeah. they're, they're, not, they're not a team that are going to roll over or go fantastic. We've what, reached the last 16. That guarantees us our sort of celebration, our bus parade back home. I mean... And I, I think that they'll fancy it today and, and I think it will be tight and I think England will win. But I do think if it goes for extra time and 90 minutes, I would fantasy Senegal to, um, to sorry, extra time penalties rather, beyond 90 minutes, I'd fantasy Senegal to, to take that and shoot out. Well, I hope it doesn't go to extra time and penalties because if it does, we'll be getting home when it's light, given how late these games kick off um, at local time. Well, over all here, this right? is now playing for us all. <laughs> well, absolutely. Um Martin, uh, Rob's written a big piece in the Sunday paper today about um, the harmony that exists in the England camp. Um, lots of good detail in there, worth reading. Um, but it, I've written pieces like that before, just without the good detail. Um, and but it does make me. It always makes me laugh that kind of we always kind of extol the virtues of harmony. But of course, there's harmony when a team when a team's doing well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is it just sort of? Is it not oversimplifying things a little bit? Well, no, it's what it is. It's, it's just this thing where we, we just do the opposite of what happens before. So all, all counts are said to be harmonious because no one's going to come in there and say this, this manager doesn't know what he's doing. He's a, uh, so what you get is uh, when Kevin Keegan, when, when Kevin Keegan was in charge of the England team, you know, there was all this stuff about we have race nights and it's fantastic. It gets all the boys together and, and, and you know, they love it and, and everything. And then, of course, when it all falls apart, the same people are coming in, well, of course we couldn't win a game. Everyone was at race nights. There was no tactics. You know, people owed each other money. They were falling out. They were furious with each other. And we do the same with the uh, with the appointments of England managers because because invariably the England manager goes because it, it hasn't worked out so what tends to happen is the the manager that comes in is the, the opposite basically the opposite yeah. of that so we've got Steve McLaren that everyone called Steve and he you know he lamps and and Stevie G and it was all very friendly and it was like that didn't work out we get Capello in so beat them all with sticks he's going to hit them with sticks they're going to starve to death you know, in their rooms, no one gets fed. This is what we're going to do. And, and now you've got Gareth, and it's a, it's a little bit more holistic. What, but that's 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 the England way. What makes me laugh is that it, it, these days is the old ketchup, the old ketchup, uh, the yeah. ketchup debate. Is it, how, Tottenham, have, Tottenham have had so many managers recently. Um, I, don't know, I get confused which is which, but one allows ketchup. 
And it's oh great, he said, let the players be themselves. They can even have ketchup. New manager comes in. Managers banned ketchup. There's still this image of a of kind of a of an orderly in the, in the Tottenham training category yeah. running in and out of the room in the ketchup, not knowing not knowing from day to day whether it's allowed or not. Yeah. Um, Tuchel cool was a ketchup banner. Tuchel cool was a ketchup banner as well, I think. I oh, think Fabio, Fabio was the ketchup banner. Fabio's yeah. big training team was okay, you can have the ketchup back and the butter. That was it. That was <laughs> it. The yeah. idea of letting their heads out for no Venables, no Venables had a thing about team. chips. Venables had a thing about chips. It was everyone wanted chips. So he went to the chef and he said to them, right, how do we give them chips, but we don't really give them chips? So uh, the, the chef said, well, you make the chips very, very big. So they look like chips, but they, they, they haven't got the same surface area of fat on them. So that's what happened. So there was uh, this great big, oh, he's brought the chips back. It's fantastic. But they weren't. They were like huge sort of things that, that were, were not like chips at all, really. But anyway. David, um, David, David, David Moyes banned chips at Manchester United when he, um, when he took over from Alex Ferguson. Apparently that was a key part of his downfall. Forget all the games that they lost. It was the fact that they couldn't eat chips. Yeah, um, chips, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, moving on to something more, more serious. Uh, Chris, I was going to ask you whether you were a ketchup man or not, but we'll leave that for another day. No, um, ketchup, your... is, uh, ketchup is banned from our, our apartment over here. Oh, is it? Well, it's probably too... I mean, ketchup's probably not posh enough for Alice to boost ball, is it? No, absolutely not. No, we, we, have, uh, we have hollandaise sauce on everything. You know, you know, that's just mayonnaise with a bit of with a bit of garlic in it, don't you? It, well, it, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter as, as, as hollandaise. Trans Poland. That's that's where you're going today. <clears throat> Trans Poland. Um, Poland got a chance, or or, or France no. going to join Holland and uh, Argentina in the next round? No. Poland are the worst team in the last sixteen. Um, uh, so I, I went to watch them the other night, and uh, and they were. Really, really terrible. Uh, they've got Lewandowski, but he's a lonely Lewandowski um, up front. You know, they, they'll they just sit in. They have no great quality in the centre of the park. That's their biggest issue. Krakowiak, I think he's playing his football in Saudi Arabia now. Uh, we, we would all know from uh, from his days at, at West Brom where he hardly... So the, hardly um, you know, he, he didn't do great there in any way, shape or form. Uh, I think this is a gimme for France. This would be the biggest shock of the, the World Cup, I think, if, um, and I know Saudi Arabia beat Argentina. I, you know, I, I just do not see this having, having uh, seen Poland play. I think the French are, um, you know, will be far too strong for them. It was it was the French reserves, you know, when they, uh, they, they got beaten last time out. I, I think Kamavinga was playing left back. He'd never played there before. You know, it was a, a team cobbled together. So, I mean, the interesting matchup is Mbappe and uh, and Matty Cash, of course. Uh, you know, if Matty Cash gets the the better of Mbappe, then uh, you know his transfer fee will uh, there'll be a few noughts on that. But but I, I I don't see it. I think this will be very very comfortable for France. But it's funny though, Rob, isn't it? That um, the the things that can happen in World Cups. Well, we we both watched the Argentina Australia game together last night. I mean, on paper, that's kind of five nil Argentina every time, and uh, you know, at the end, uh, you know, the Argentina are hanging on a little bit there against a team that. Taken from, you know, the Scottish Premiership, the English Championship, oh, the, MLS, the, the A League. It's just not disrespectful. It's the truth. English Americans, English bring, Americans. Bring, bring Scotland into it, and you know, give it's Scotland the truth. The kick and Australia come haven't got Australia haven't got a player or didn't have. They've gone home now. Playing for them from any of the major leagues in the world, and yet there they are, only losing two one to Argentina. It oh, yeah, for- Poland's day. Firstly, can I just say that, Chris, there can't be a bigger shot than Saudi Arabia and Argentina as well, Cup, can there? Have you it's seen perfect. Poland? Have you seen <laughs> Poland? At least Saudi, the Saudi Arabian players can run. You, you oh, talk about Australia last night. Oh, the, the, the Australian players, you, you know, really well organised and committed. Yeah. I mean, Poland are old and slow. Yeah, but I, think, I really oh, don't know how that feels. <laughs> Um, well, we all do. Um, yeah, exactly. I, th- I think yeah, the Argentina got very twitchy, but I, I, I am with Chris. On that. I can't, see, I can't see that Poland side suddenly leaping into gear and sort of like uh, being in expansive sort of field, creating chances. And, and I, I did see France when they lost. It, it was the reserves. What it did tell you was say that, that France don't have the depth in the squad. Part of the interesting man. you know, it doesn't. Doesn't run as deep. Their attacking options don't run as deep as Brazil and England, but their first eleven is is probably better. 
To be fair, so that was one of the, that was one of the points about the substitutions that you know when you're talking about England's bench, as soon as one of the other teams rested their first team, they got beat. Brazil got beat. Um, mm-hmm. France got beat. You know, it, 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 it's it's quite interesting. You look at uh, some of the teams here and you look at the bench and you think, oh, this team's got a chance. And you look at the bench and thinking, that is 101 great Premier League stoomers on, 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 on that bench there. That's, you know, that's guys that couldn't get in the team at West Brom in the end and, and, and stuff. You know, it, it, it's, it's one of the reasons to be quietly confident about England, maybe until we meet Kylian Mbappé, but... Quietly. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's a good point, Mark. As we wrap up, when we do look at the English, English bench, that does give us reasons to be cheerful, I think. Um, just depends whether Gareth uh, uses his substitution wi- wisely. It depends on whether Jaime Maguire scores the goal that Chris Sutton so badly wants him to. And I, I do. Think, and it also depends. Yeah. I think it also depends on just how strong Senegal, Senegal turn out to be. We will find out tonight, 10 o'clock local time. Um, England against Senegal, the World Cup. Um, I think England will win, but then I always say that, and I'm often, I'm often wrong. Um, thanks for coming on, chaps. It's lovely to see you, and um, thanks for watching, everybody. Awesome. We'll see you at the same time tomorrow.